I introduced myself as Terry Linton, and we, uh, I have my wife Janet and three children, Brad, Eric, and April. We participate in competitive plowing with uh, horses in the single furrow walk and plow. Our main focus was the dairy herd. We dairy farm here on 225 acres, milk about 35 Holstein cows. I'm Brad Linton. I'm the oldest son. I milk and do chores to take care of the farm. We, uh, have uh, several head of horses. Always did like horses. My dad would never let me have horses when he was here on the farm. We got Andy, Jake, and Trish, and, and Pepper. I plowed with Andy and Pepper uh, the most. We break horses for other people to drive, or train them, I should say, train horses for other people to drive, and train people to drive horses. Andy. He should have inspected the camera, I guess, first. <laughs> we like to wait until they're a little older before we expect them to plow because it can be kind of difficult to train them just to calm down and go steady when we're plowing. I help them usually start them off, and then after that, my uh, grandfather usually works with them once we get know what they're like and figure out they're safe enough that they can be driven by other people. And how long have you been driving horses? Then? most of my life. I guess putting her any job we do or whatever we do, we'd more than likely do it because we like it rather than because we have to do it. I mean, certainly in the dairy operation, there's a few jobs that we don't like to do, but they are jobs that have to be done. The same with the horses. There's a few things maybe with them you don't like to have to do, but we involve horses because we like horses. When did you first start competitive plowing? Between grade eight and grade nine, I think. 2001, I guess. First county match. Oh, gosh. We were at Durham County, and Dad had went over and got his number, and he was usually the only one that ever plowed there. So he struck his out and did his crown, and he says, well, there's lots of time. Why don't you go get a number? Kind of a little, not scared, but not sure if I wanted to do it. Then the first time I plowed, uh, uh, tried with the walk and plow, the first thing I did was get a plow handle in the middle of the stomach and, and uh, switched back to the riding plow for that day. It wasn't too bad. There was a bit of a curve in the one side and it wasn't always uniform from one end to the other. But I got through it. There was little things about the horse that I hadn't figured out yet and uh, major things about the plowing that I hadn't figured out yet. And, and it, it didn't. It didn't go all that great. Looking back, I fought it way too much, and I should have just let it flow more. There'll be a county match from July through August and on through September, past the IPM into October. Match day, yeah, 8.30, 9 o'clock. Yeah, usually the plowing starts at either 9.30 or 10. You go and register and show them your insurance certificate. Once they have all the competitors listed, then they draw lands to, to find out what order you're, you're plowing in. Once you've done that, you go out and inspect your land for any rocks or holes or or defects in the land. If there's nothing there, then you would uh, stake up. Set up your stakes for your strikeout. And then when it, at the starting time, you can go ahead and turn, start turning your first furrows.
There is uh, usually five to five and a half hours to complete a land. There's a penalty for every so many minutes over the, the finish time. The horses typically, if you keep ramming them round for round, will will get the feeling that you're in a hurry and they'll want to speed up and speed up. And of course, the more they speed up, the more difficult it is to hold the plow. So you could have it done in an hour and a hour to an hour and a half, but you're not going to end up with a very nice product going that fast. You can't train every horse to be a good plowing horse. You first have to kind of get to know the horse's attitude. It's like people, you know, not everyone is suited to every kind of a job and not every horse is suited to plowing, so. Each one has their own little uh, negative characteristic, I guess. It's pretty hard to find one that's perfect or find any one that's perfect or any horse that's perfect. If he's, if he's too excitable, then he certainly isn't going to be any good for a plow horse. The first two thirds of the land is really nice. It's plowing easy. It's no trouble to keep the plow in. It's no trouble to keep it at the right width and depth. But at the uh, the other end there, where it was a bit lower and a bit wetter, maybe it's a little more compaction down there. It's a little harder to keep the plow down in the position. So that's going to show up because I'm not getting enough soil to bury the stubble down there. So that's going to be my downfall today. The horses are behaving themselves really well in here, so there's no point in getting them wound up by trying to dig into something that's too hard. We'll kind of let them have their own way today, and they'll treat me better on the next one then. Most of the times they just stand there till they think it's time to go and kind of they decide when they want to go. Quite often when, we, when an animal doesn't do what we want it to do, we say it's a dumb animal. Come on, Andy. 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 Gee. Gee. But you could argue that Gee. probably it's a smart animal, uh, you know, and it, it does understand what you want and it, it's smart enough to know that it maybe doesn't want to have to do that. Easy. Easy, 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 Andy. Easy, Andy. Usually when you want them to go, you click your teeth on the tongue. You... Yep. Yep. G is go, right? G. G. G, Andy. G. Ha. Ha, let's go left. Ha, ha, pepper. Ha, ha, whoa. And then to stop, you say, whoa. Easy. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. And they will listen to different people, because I know my grandpa can take them and do half the stuff what dad can with them. Whoa. Whoa. A horse knows a different person. Uh, you, you know, you harness up your horse, and he's got blinders on, and he can't look back. But you put someone different on the end of the lines and the horse will know it. It's mind over mind anyways. It's not physical power over physical power. Most of the horses weigh in, you know, 1,800 pounds to a ton or more, so we know who the winner would be there. Four things that you would have to have, certainly to start with, are a, a, a well-broke, easy-going team. That's a big part of the, the whole deal, is just having a team that responds well. A plow that's properly set up. What, what I'm adjusting now is the height of my skimmer, which helps me to know how deep I'm plowing. It's supposed to skim off about uh, three, half to three quarters of an inch, so if I'm plowing six inches deep, I should be set at about somewhere between four and three quarters. Third, I would have to say, is when you're setting up your initial stakes for your strikeout to, to get things straight off the start, as straight as possible off the start, and to maintain uniformity all across those furrows, just try to reproduce that first good furrow all the way across to make them all look the same. 
we got to judge it as we see it. The straightness, the uniformity is the two main things. And then your, your uh, crown and your finish and bearing the stubble and ins and outs and uh, so on. Uniformity, uh, uniformity and straightness is very crucial. But all, everybody in the class has the same problem. If you had lots of rain and have ideal plowing and sod, well, your scores would be higher, but everybody would be the same. Getting the first straight cut, once you got that down, then the rest of it is... Yeah, yeah that, but if it's you don't the get first, that first one straight, then yeah, you're, you're doomed. You're, you're doomed. doomed. You can go back and forth through there as many times as you want till you get it the right, uh, right widths, and you can straighten it out if you've got a bit of a crook in it. Um, you could actually even bring it back narrow if you've made it too wide, although that's a bit of a trick to doing that. If you've made a boo-boo and you, you weren't able to or didn't straighten it up, then you're going to spend the whole rest of the land trying to hide it. Guess that'll have to do. We start out tending to try to fight the plow a little too much. You're not going to change that much how that plow wants to follow through the ground. It's going to basically fall through the ground according to how you have it set. And so if it's properly set, then you can just make slight little adjustments by pressure on one handle or the other handle to, uh, to keep it going the way you want it to. But yes, we, we've all been known to be seen either trying to push it to help the horses get it through or you know be trying to pry it one way or the other and it's it's not going to happen the skimmer is the first thing to touch the soil it skims a little patch out first and then uh, the colder follows it and makes a nice clean cut vertical in the soil and then that allows the shear to start to roll the soil over you start out with a you scratch up or you uh, your first trip uh, across the field and back is very shallow. All you're doing on that first trip is, is cutting the, the trash or the green off the top. We want to kind of throw this green stuff off because if we don't, some of that green stuff could be sticking up out of the center of the two furrows and you're going to lose points when the judge comes to look at it if he sees any of that green sticking up. So certainly while it's okay for us to throw that green stuff out of the way, we will. Your crown's your first four furrows, your first two rounds, um, but you then you throw up the additional to have uh, have six rounds, and then after your neighbor, or the guy plowing beside you, which is on a higher land number, uh, when he has his six up, then you can cast off against uh, his land, and you plow down to a dead furrow between his land and yours. Uh, when you do your dead furrow. Your finish, you have to cut all the grass off, and then that will leave a kind of a trench to help hold some of your moisture there in some of the soil and drain some too. You single out, and for competition, it doesn't leave the marks on the plowing, which you get higher points if you don't leave the hoof prints in the plowing. You have to qualify to go and participate in the competition at the international, so you would plow at a county match until you've attained the, the minimum of 110 points to qualify. Occupied and active over the next five days, we're expecting uh, upwards of 90,000 people. I think as we look around us here today, you're seeing people from all ages. We also have a real broad base of support in those folks who maybe are active farmers, those who are rural land owners and live in the country but are wannabe farmers. We also have those who are one or two generations removed from the farm perhaps, but still have that feeling for the land. Because with the plowing, that's a very basic act. We plow the land, we scatter the seeds, we grow the crop, and we feed the people in the cities. Originally was basically just a plow and match, and then they kind of expanded out into uh, exhibits and displays. The Queen of the Furrows role is basically to get out and be involved, promote the match and agriculture, and go to schools and talk about farm safety, and go to uh, parades and fairs and hand out ribbons, just kind of go out there and encourage people to come to the match and just go out and have fun. To the international, you're going to represent your county. If you win, then you are representing the international plowing match for your following year. This is Prince next to me and King on the farm. My horse's names are Buck and Bob. This is Jeff and Nick. 
Okay, this horse here is uh, Duke. He's five year old. And this is Midnight. He's ten year old. Ça c'est Bonnie. Elle a dix ans. Et ça c'est uh, Mike. And this is Maybelline and Di. Queenie and Ricky. Here. Oh well. I've never seen girls. Get over your head. <laughs> I've won the IPM twice, I think. <laughs> I know I've won it twice. On Monday, they always make available a, a practice field. I mean, the idea of the practice field is supposed to be so you get a feel for the land. Every every bit of land that's different, you need to make adjustments to compensate for whether it's heavy, makes you want to cut wide, or whether it's hard and you have trouble getting depth, or, or whatever the reason, whether you got a lot of trash and you have to adjust your skimmer to try to get rid of that. But uh, mostly, Mostly you're getting a feel for the land. Competition starts on Tuesday. It's hard, there's big lumps that push you around. Today's the horse need a little more rest. We're not that far behind, it's just the ground won't let us go any faster. Was pretty happy with it. with it. It was kind of lumpy, so it might not look too uniform, but my measurements come down pretty good, and my finish ended up straight, and I think I've got one of the best soil furrows I've had in a long time, so I don't know how it compares to the others, though, because I didn't get a chance to go and look at the other plow, and we'll let the judge do that. <laughs> There's a fellow that they gave him a pin, oh, a few years ago, a number of years ago, for plowing for 60 years at the IPM, and certainly he's a He's a competitor. He's usually in the top few. Um, he's older now and a little more difficult for him to, uh, to, to maintain that, but he can still do a, a top-notch job of plowing. We are required to have a a helper along with us. Uh, we're always supposed to have someone with our horses in the plow field, so you want your helper to be someone that's familiar with your horses as best. If there looks to be a concern with the horses that could be a potential problem, then we would certainly be able to go out there and help them, but for the most part, it's help from the headland only. Each bit of ground can be a little bit different until you get some experience in it, you know. Uh, he's certainly in a different kind of land than he was yesterday. Yesterday there was more chunks and lumps that tended to want to roll you around and the only thing you could do was to plow deep to handle it. Today it's a little looser and a little loamier, so should be able to keep it straighter and maybe more uniform today than yesterday. It's friendly competition. The prize money or whatever you win isn't that big that it's worth fighting over, that's for sure. No, for the most part, everyone, you know, if anyone needs help setting stakes or someone to watch their horses while well, they have to, to go repair something or whatever, there's always someone there to do that. So everybody wants to see everybody do a good job. The land's all across the board here today, and each has their own little slip up or defect or whatever you'd want to call it. I think maybe when we get down to depth and get some weight on, we'll be all right. But just getting that first one up. I think I did about as well as I could do with what I was, was plowing in, and I'm not complaining about that. Not at all. There were some stones that I got to practice a little on the straight and that kind of stuff out, but I think it came down pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. It, it's a social event, so we, we, we enjoy having the, the spectators there. If you're kind of seeing through that you have a good chance at maybe being in the winner's circle and you get a lot of spectators out there making it difficult to maneuver around, sometimes is, is a bit of a concern, but it's not usually a big problem. If you ask people to give you a little room, they usually will. Not as clean as you'd like her to be. Almost straight. Yeah. 
Not a whole lot more you can do with it, I don't think. You know, we enjoy winning at that competition, but probably more than that, it's a social event. Everyone that is in the competitive plowing as we've made friends with and, and call friends, and so you like to get together and compete with them and visit with them and socialize with them. You know, you're all, of course, you're always trying to hone your skills a little bit to improve your competitive plowing. The prize money for the IPM, first place is $100, second place is 90 and that goes on down. At the end of the competition, after the four days, uh, the champion plowman in each class will get an additional $300, and the reserve in that class will get an extra $200. And if you're lucky enough to be the overall champion over all of the horse classes, Again, it's an additional $300 for, the, for the, the overall grand champion and $200 for the overall reserve champion. On the Friday, I figured my land was as good or better than the one I had on the second day when I got first, which doesn't mean anything, but I had a I guess a slight feeling about it. Uh, I did fairly well. I got first two days and then two seconds. I pretty much knew by, kind of almost by the end of the third day, as long as I stayed in the top three, I had a pretty good chance of winning it. Get up. Whoa. Now if we could uh, carry on with the uh, plowing competition prize winners. Class one, group two, jointer plows walking. The winner of this class is Brad Linton from Rosemead, and he had 449 points. Any parent's gonna take pride in their children being interested in something they're doing. You can you know, certainly and can uh, take pride and enjoy when they when they do uh, compete and they do well. Oh, I'll probably be can. Continuing as long as there's a competition and as long as I can still walk. <laughs> what I've grown up doing and I enjoy it. There isn't a whole lot that are starting to plow or carrying on the tradition of their relatives. <laughs>